kidding me? What the f is wrong with you? You idiots! Alright. In this next part on working with hell, this is going to be a somewhat of a general idea on how to set up her workplace or like her space. Like you're going to divinate to her and wrap with her and have her own set place. Now, when it comes to her, she's actually one of the most... She's actually one of the most simple deities in terms of this. Like, it, it's so simple that in reality, she doesn't care where she is. She doesn't care what's around her. She doesn't care if she's on the floor like this, on top of a dresser top. She just doesn't care. Because she's more focused on bettering you. More than anything. In reality, you can make it all look pretty fancy and whatever, she's gonna still be all okay. And what? That's just how she, she's gonna respond to it. But to set it up to the most in the line of with what she represents what I'm going to show you is exactly how I made my first space to her many moons ago and to go along that same example well first off right off the bat I have like this old candlestick that I had for a long time and with that I'm going to put it right in the center like that and usually this doesn't have to be like it could be against the wall like this it really just doesn't matter but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this doll that a friend of mine made a, about yeah this doll is about a year or two old now and now that I'm thinking about it I'm going to put that right at the top, like that, but in reality, since I'm going to get it, it's going to be facing me, probably going to move forward just a little bit so that way you can actually see it. Okay, so here we have the image of her. Now, it doesn't have to be specifically a doll. It could be a printout in a little portrait holder. It can be anything as long as it's just like a representation of her or whatever you deem to represent her. Now, this is where I got a little specific. Having indications of a light side and a darker side, you then go about it accordingly. So you have the light side on this side. So the light side will go as such. And remember, it doesn't have to be precisely like this, but as long as that representation of a dark and a light, black, white, is evident, it's acknowledging that aspect of her. And me having my OCD BS. There, okay. Yeah. So, we have our indications of the, you know, there, we'll just leave it like that. Now that we have our indications of the light and the dark, ah, bloody hate this stupid BS. Now that we have that, our next thing is well, usually some people like to have like, like these candles as well. Now, again, you can use any kind of candle holder, but as for this demonstration, naturally it really goes with her well. Are these like these little shot glasses that are actually skulls? Mm hmm. And just like again, you take, I'm not really gonna unwrap it, but you have the white. And if this twat doesn't, okay. That looks like I'm gonna have to unwrap it, folks. Oh boy. Like everything nowadays is childproof. 
tape you have the white one. And the black one, obviously. If I would have known that these things were going to sit up like they're supposed to, I probably wouldn't, you know, have to do this, but... Essentially having having your indication of the one side being light, one side being dark, is pretty much the key thing to keep in mind when you're making a space. So then you also have your black white right there. Another good thing to consider. And here, I actually made, even though uh, the camera is definitely not going to be able to pick this up, but I made, like, runes that actually have, that are actually made on little skull heads. So, I'm not sure if you're able to tell that, that's, that there's a rune on there, but... <laughs> oh, my little sack of... Rune heads. I would also put on inner space. As well as you can also definitely put in other skull related things like these little skull beads. And when it comes to that, you could just pretty much plop them wherever you deem fit. With her, it really doesn't matter. Like I said earlier. Regarding stones, again, I think we're getting kind of the gist of this, having a like a black stone and then like a white stone, it, it just it just keeps playing out in the same way. Now now say you have for example definitely not gonna put one of those up there. Say if you have like a dried dried petals of roses or of a what have you regarding the plant. Like, like, again, you can say it with me, you can do it with the color, like if it's a dark or a light theme, but in all reality, since these are dried and they're dead, ultimately it doesn't matter, you can just spring them all around, you can make it all fancy smanchy if you like, you can just be all like, here's your spot, deal with it, this is how it is, or whatever you're deeming fit for the moment. But it's pretty much the idea of just like, like keeping that sense of like, okay, this is sacred because to her, life and well, pretty much death is life. Everything comes alive and everything kicks the bucket. So all of it, including the parts that aren't pretty, need to be respected and and acknowledged. Now if you have something like this, I don't expect everybody to have one of these. If you have an anthem, well, she's kind of in the way, but if you have an anthem blade like this, you can definitely put that on there. Whether if you want to put it on the left or middle, I usually put it on the left. And now, whenever you use a blade like this, an anthem blade like so. You understand that if you're having it be used in any kind of ceremonial thing, like what I said in the last installment, don't hurt yourself just to make her happy. Don't do that. Trust me, she will tell you, wow, you're dumb. Now get out of here before I really make you really hurt. Because she's She's a deity that, that primarily says, look, I'm only here to make you succeed. If you have to hurt yourself to make me happy, no. No. 
Just don't. Because to her, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to hurt yourself to make something better? That's not how it needs to be. But other good considerations to put on in this space, you can also put in images of your ancestors who have passed. If you're like against the wall or if you have a stand of some kind that you can put them on, you can put them anywhere. You can also put up on here anything that any kind of, um, I'm trying to figure out a good way to put this, anything that you're currently facing that you need help with that you want to put to rest and help you overcome. Even if it's something as simple as like an addiction, hell is really good for that. She will tell you, wow, okay, you want to get rid of that addiction? Okay, every time you put, let's say, for an example, if you're having a trouble drinking, Okay, you're an alcoholic? Okay, how can we do this? Every time you put your mouth on that bottle, I scream at you. For an example, that's one of the ways she'll help you get rid of addiction. Every time you put your mouth on that bottle, you, you go deaf. And the only way for that to stop is if you stop putting your mouth on the bottle. For an example. Another kind of offering when you're coming towards her is that you can actually face one of your phobias. Like me, for an example, I have a phobia of fish. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Deal with it. One of the things that, for me personally, what I could do is actually get a fish, plop it right in front of me, and actually push myself to actually, yeah, like actually grab it and try and overcome that fear in front of her. That's one of the best things you can offer her because she's like, there you go, okay. You're facing your fear and you're being fearless. There, that's how you're supposed to do it. And really a fish. <laughs> but another key thing to also remember, if you're coming towards her ever, don't come at it with a negative aspect or a negative viewpoint of looking at death as bad or down or negative. That'll piss her off instantly. What she expects is for you to come towards her as if, if it was any other being that you work with. Because what you'd be doing then is looking at her as a being just like anybody else. She does not play favorites. She doesn't hold anyone higher or lower. She looks as she looks at anybody else or any other being as what they are. That's what they are. It's not complicated. This is a person? Okay, it's a person. What it what it's crippled? Is it it's still a person? Why am I gonna learn it different? That's the the whole idea. When it comes to say other things you can also put on this space, really she again just doesn't really care. She primarily focuses on the best for you, but if you would like to build a space for her, it is just going to be all like, okay, woo, I have my own space, whoop de woo Are you doing what you're supposed to do? No? Okay, well, you're not going to sleep tonight. She primarily prioritizes your growth and you being the best that you can be over anything else. In fact, she doesn't care if... <laughs> She could care less if you don't do anything for her, but if you push your best at what you're supposed to be doing, and if you're on point all the time, which is not really possible, <laughs> then she'll be perfectly content. But she understands that everybody has the problems they face, everybody has challenges, everybody has difficulties. Everybody has them. There's nobody here that's living a perfect, flawless life at all. There's always some karmic yin-yang thing they have to deal with with every choice they make. That's just how it is. But in the next segment, I'll be going on about the more personal um, experiences and how 
how I encountered her the, for the very first time many, many, many moons ago, how that went, and alongside, like, what she's done for me so far, and, well, keep doing. And, as well as, like, a little thing to inspire you all to maybe really consider working with her, because for me personally, I don't think I could have gotten any other deity that is so devoted, fixated, and and wants the best for me. I don't think I could ever ask for any other kind of deity. Just because she doesn't look pretty, well, that, that don't mean jack crap. Just because it doesn't look pretty doesn't mean it can't be your best and strongest ally. Looks don't mean jack. Don't, they don't mean anything. Sometimes the things that aren't the most pleasant to look at are your best friend and your best advisor. Remember that. That's key.